Hey guys, welcome back to The Sky is the Limit, the show that looks to the create, challenge, and entertain with artists all over the world. I am your host, Tristan Neal. Thank you for coming back. And if you've never been here, thank you for joining us. I, uh, I'm so glad you're here. Nice to meet you. The Rockefeller Tree is lit. It is officially the holiday season, folks. I'm so excited and I, I'm just excited to see family. I'm excited to keep filming episodes for you guys and keep releasing new episodes. So I thank you for coming back and I am so excited for 2021 and I'm not, I, I'm going to say I'm not the only one there. Josh, you probably agree with me. All right, guys, thanks for joining us. We have another great episode for you today. Stay tuned and Josh, roll that intro. Today's guest is no stranger to the stage. He's a singer-songwriter from Southern California. He just released his debut EP called One Second of One Day. He loves interacting with his fans. He loves bringing a lot of energy to whatever he does. He's such a fun guy to be around. And I'm, I'm just so uh, honored that he decided to be on the show. I'd like to introduce you to Gunnar Gale. Guys, he's here. Gunner Gale. Gunner, how are we doing? Good, man. Doing really good. Staying busy yeah. where we can. Hey, there we go. I like to hear it. Uh, um, quarantine treating you well? It is. It is. Uh, did a big little live live show summer series that turned out really well, so I'm really happy about that. And it's great. Got a project out. Been busy. Been staying really busy. Hey, that that's really good to hear. I'm uh, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, so, you know what? Let's just jump right into it. First of all, congratulations on your your one second of one day. It's your first uh, album, right? Yes, yeah, my first ever project. Technically, it's an EP. I know I'm okay. a lot of the difference, right. but um, yeah, it's my first ever kind of group of songs to be put out. I'm really excited about it. Been sitting on them for a while, and just nice to finally have like that breath of like, okay, there's finally something out there. It's been a rough, we had a rough like year before then just music wise and figuring out our situation. So to finally be in the yeah. spot out and moving forward is really good. Hey, that's awesome. Um, can you, can you just tell us where, where this, this album or EP, sorry, kind of started out? Like what was, what was like the, what was the beginning of this beast, if you will? Yeah, okay. So these group of songs came actually from like a like over over two years span of time they're kind of my my top picks over like every song that I've done um in the last year so I wrote the 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 focus song from the project is a song called not even in my dreams I actually wrote that a year ago um a year ago like last month in we did a little album camp and wrote a bunch of songs in Malibu and that was one of my favorites from that and then did another uh, another songwriting camp in December and wrote you know, a lot of, a lot of the other singles that came out before the EP. Um, and then, yeah, it's crazy. Like the, there's a song on there called Missing Someone. And that song is actually like, not one of the first songs that I've ever, that I had ever really written, but it definitely was an early record. And it's just been one of my favorites over every song that we've written. It's like the one that sticks in my head, like, okay, this one, you know, we'll keep this with the new batch of songs. Oh, we'll keep this with the new batch of songs. And so yeah, um, I thought that that was a sign to keep it. So yeah, it's kind of just a, a project full of my favorite songs from the last, you know, year, year and a half. That's great. I love that. Yeah. So, so the, you talked about a particular song on there that kind of jumps out to you more. Do you think there's any reason why that, that song kind of comes up to my more kind of, I guess is with you a little more? Yeah. You know, 
a lot of the singles that we put out before the project um, were kind of, I would say they're pretty, they're like anxious records. They're like very, they have this like teenage angst to them and this like, you know, unsureness and, and you can hear it in, you know, the songwriting and in the vocals and everything. And the focus record from the project, not even in my dreams, is this, is just this like totally open, like, you know, like almost like just straight love song. And it's just, it's like a breath of fresh air um, in comparison to everything that was put out before then. So I think it sticks out to me because it's just a song that you can listen to and not have to think about. As for a lot yeah. of the, you know, like they're very, you know, lyrically, they're very intricate and, and sonically, there's a lot of like little things in there that we spent a lot of time um, focusing on as for, as for not even in my dreams. It's just easy to listen to. It's, it's sweet. It's just feels, it feels good. Hey, that's great. I love that. That's like, a, that's a great feeling to have when writing a song like that. That's, that's so amazing. What, what do you think the biggest challenge has been when writing, uh, even with this EP, I guess, specifically? Um, I'd say when it comes to songwriting, the biggest challenges are when, I don't know, I'd say like, I mean, there's obviously like per song, you know, you write like, everyone has their own writing style, but you write part of, you know, the first half of the song and then you write the chorus or whatever it is, whatever your, 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 uh, whatever order is of how you write. There's always that point where you're like halfway through and you're like, okay, do we come back to this another time? Like, to, you know, tomorrow, do we take a break? Do we do this and we do this? Um, and so that's usually like per song. It's like figuring that moment out of like, okay, let's push through, let's write the second verse or, you know, let's do it tomorrow or whatnot. But when it comes to actually like what's the hardest part about songwriting, it's definitely when you've been writing a lot and you kind of exhaust your, your, you know, your feelings and your emotions. And I've got this like list of, of titles and one liners. I'll be back. It's in my phone that, you know, I could be thinking right now and think of an idea and put it in there. And then when I go to write, I'll go through them all. And when you get, you know, when you write a lot, like, you know, every day for, you know, we did a camp for 10 days and you're going through and you're like picking all these ideas and saying, this is a good one. This is a good one. You just get kind of exhausted of, of thoughts and ideas. And, um, and then you kind of tap into where a lot of, a lot of my songs also come from is, which is like storytelling. So you get to a point where like, cool, I've talked a lot about me and how I feel and like past relationships and um, good enough is a really vulnerable song about me and my life. But then you get to a point where you can write, fun songs or like songs that still mean something to you but they're not necessarily about you which is where you know you write like story type songs you write like an emotion that maybe someone else in the room has felt or is feeling or that you have felt in the past that you haven't even really thought about or you know like stuff that's relatable and obviously means something to you but you can tap into like let's write a story about a guy and a girl meeting at a party and you know what i mean like you can you yeah. can together um a painting it's 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 really similar to that it's like sculpting together like these two ideas yeah, and, and yeah. that no that's so great do you think that sometimes you can lose yourself in a sense and it, it it gets harder to actually write from your personal self because maybe you've exhausted that or maybe even um you're thinking okay like these songs are starting to get traction maybe i should start like thinking about what my audience wants and totally. you kind of lose yourself. Yeah. How, how is that kind of process within totally. yourself? There's a, lot, there's a lot of like thought that goes into songwriting sometimes. And, and you know, when you like, you're writing a chorus, you're like, okay, we should make the end of the chorus hookier because that's what, you know, that's what works. And so sometimes you get stuck in those spots of like trying to write stuff that you think is going to connect or trying to write stuff that you think is going to, you know, get stuck in somebody's head. When really at the end of the day, the best songs come from, you know, where you just write something that you want to write and what feels good to you. And you, you take all of that external stuff and just put it to the side because there is a lot, you know, like, especially when it comes to, you know, when you, you start working with labels and management and they're like, oh, we're putting you in the room with this person wrote the last, you know, Selena Gomez single. So then you're writing, you know, trying to write a single that's going to do well and that's when things get lost a little bit. And you, you know, you, you walk out of them with sometimes great songs, sometimes okay songs, but it's, it's never as true as the songs that, you know, you put those to the side and just write what you want to write. Yeah, no, definitely. As an artist, I feel like we all have our, our whys or like, like why we do this or the, the reasoning that we keep 
going and we keep just putting out stuff. I wanted to just like pick your brain a little bit on like what your why is and why, why you keep putting out music or is it, I mean, is it just like, Hey, I'm having fun. Um, for me, it's a, it's, you know, obviously it's a blast and I love, you know, one of, one of, one of my go-to answers is, is a lot of the time is live performances. And I think that live shows are, are, you know, everything. And they're, they're so much of why I love to do this because the energy of being in a room with people singing the same songs and, and, and enjoying the same music and having that moment together is like one of my, it blows my mind. It's one of the most astonishing things. Um, but I think on a little bit of a deeper level, music for me, and I think for a lot of people was, is that thing where like, when you feel a certain emotion, whether it's like sadness or happiness or whatever, music is, is the go-to. So like when I'm having a really tough time or having a bad day, like what I want to do is go listen to music, whether it be sad music to make me like wallow in sadness or happy music to feel the opposite. Like it just makes me feel things that, that, that nothing else in the world can. And the thought of someone sitting like me or like any other artist in the world sitting and writing that song and it meaning something to them and then could mean something totally different to someone else is like, and help someone else is the craziest thing. That's the real reason and the real depth to like why I, I love to continue to do this is because, you know, I get messages all the time of like this, your song helped me through like a really tough part of my life. And to me, that's me about an artist that I grew up listening to. So it's wild. It's like, you know, I want, I want my music to be, you know, heard by as many people as possible and hopefully help as many people as possible. And I'm just going to keep aiming for that. Yeah, no, I love that. Is there another artist who's kind of inspired you and maybe had an impact on your songwriting? Yeah. Um, I grew up listening to a lot of John Mayer. I want someone to make some trouble. I think that it's kind of like almost a cliche answer at this point because everyone loves to reference John Mayer. But I think in regards to the question that you just asked me like two minutes ago, he has that part of songwriting where you listen and you're like, that's honesty. You know, it's not, it's not, it's not forced and it's not fake. Like you can hear the real authenticity in it. And I think that that like is a real reason that I am who I am, you know, songwriting wise is because of how his music made me feel growing up. So he's obviously a big, has been a big influence on me and, there's a lot of young artists that are coming up right now that I think are really cool and watching them, you know, kind of start their shine and, you know, in this time of quarantine and whatnot, it's cool. So I, there's a lot of people that I love to like admire on the daily basis, but I think John Mayer was like growing up the foundations leading to where I am. Hey, that's so great. I love that. Um, what kind of experience do you think you want to give your, your listener? Um, during during the time they're listening or what emotion do you want to evoke in your listener when you when just you are thinking about a song I think what emotion varies per song but I think the consistent theme that I would hope people hear when they listen to my music is honesty and and realness like sincerity realness and honesty like those are the three things that that just that's that's what you know me writing a song is like me opening a part of myself and putting it into something that I'm sharing with the world. Right. So I think that if people could hear my music and, and, and hear the truth behind it and hear, you know, that it's not just what we were talking about. It's not just like, Hey, let's try to write a song that's going to do well, but they can hear the, the, you know, the real intention behind it and the real honesty in the songwriting and lyrics. And I think that's, I think that's the goal, you know, have people yeah. recognize that. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, going back to live shows, because you don't have them anymore, has it been harder to connect to your own material? Seeing that like you can't really go out and give a live performance and say, get that energy and get that feedback. Is it harder to connect? I, it, 100%. It's, it's, it's really, it's, it's a weird thing because when you put music out, it's like almost instant gratification and you know, it, it's when, when you can go to a venue and you're performing these songs and people are singing them back to you and, you know, this next song is blah, blah, blah. And they, it's like, that's the reason that's, that's the easiest and most gratifying way to feel like this is working. So when you take that away, all you can really base that off of are 
our numbers and our, our messages and comments. And like, of course, those things are incredible. And, and, you know, you always look at those things, but when they're, when they're by themselves without having the live show aspect of it, it definitely is, is different. And it's, it's more difficult. And that's why, that's why with this group of songs, you know, I wanted to do this kind of, you know, one second, one day live show thing that we've been doing to give somewhat of that experience. Um, but moving forward, like, you know, we just wrote a majority of an album and I'm definitely holding off until, until there's some certainty when live shows are coming back because yeah. like I said, live shows to me are, are everything. So without them, it's, you know, it's like missing half of, half of the reason. Yeah, no, definitely. I, I, I could so see that even with uh, acting, it's the same thing. We're kind of no live uh, audiences is kind of hurting the arts in general. Um, so there's always one question I like to ask every single person that comes on the show. What's one piece of advice you have for artists and creators around the world right now during the time we are living in? Stay yeah. motivated. Like find, find the things that motivate you um, and, and, and work hard and just keep going because that's, that's like what keeps me going is just knowing that, that this, will, this will end you know, better, in a better situation than it is now. It'll get better. The things that you miss will come back. So just work through it. This is just a, you know, hopefully just a speed bump. And you know, that's cross my fingers because that's what's yeah, yeah. a big, big speed bump. Yeah, no, definitely. All right. Hey, man, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for sharing your wise words, just like what you've been through. Um, and I always like to give the last minute to, to kind of where can we see more of you? When, when can we hear more? Go, go watch, uh, go listen to one second of one day. Yeah. What? Yeah. Let, let's hear some, some things. Yeah. Um, one second, one day, the EP is out. It's on all stream streaming platforms. Um, we have tons and tons and tons of content around it. Bunch of music videos, bunch of lyric videos with exclusive content. Um, you can find me anywhere. My Instagram is Gunner Gale. My Twitter is Gunner Gale. Everything is Gunner Gale. So go find it um, if you haven't already. And yeah, there's just more exciting things to come. So awesome. Hey, thank you so much for being here, Gunner. Um, it's it's been a pleasure. And yeah, thank you. Thank you, Tristan. I'm glad I'm glad that that you started doing this, and and I'm happy to be a part of it. And thank yeah. you, dude. It means a lot. All right, guys. Episode twelve. Thank you for being here. And remember, it's a good day to have a good day. See you guys. Hey, you got to the end of the video. How are we doing? All this is, is I really want you to subscribe. I want you to go watch our other artists on STO and let me know what you think. Please reach out to me. I want to talk to more people. Please. I love you guys. And always remember, it's a good day to have a good day.